Hi, my name is Kaisa Krusko, and I am a family law attorney in Bedford, New Hampshire. If you are the victim of domestic violence and you need to obtain a restraining order to protect yourself, here are some things you need to know about filing a domestic violence petition. First, you can file for a domestic violence restraining order in the county that you reside or the county that the defendant resides. You can also file if you have temporarily relocated because of the domestic violence in the county where you are temporarily residing. Call your local courthouse and they will give you directions. Second, domestic violence restraining orders cover family and household situations. For example, you can file for a domestic violence restraining order against a former or current intimate or sexual partner, household member, parent, sibling, or other family member. Domestic violence restraining orders are not intended to cover situations such as your landlord or another non-domestic person. When you are completing your domestic violence petition, it is important to be accurate and detailed about the information that you include in the petition. The petition and what you write in it is going to be the basis for the judge issuing the restraining order. And you want to make sure that you get everything in that will give the judge the information they need to issue the restraining order to protect you. If you don't include all the information and details, you could later be prevented from testifying at the final restraining order hearing about information that is not included in the domestic violence restraining order. Domestic violence restraining orders have very specific definition of abuse. Abuse, as defined under RSA 173B, means an assault, reckless conduct, criminal threatening, sexual assault, interference with freedom, destruction of property, unauthorized entry, or harassment. And all of the definitions of these crimes are defined under the criminal code. Make sure you explain to the judge why you need the restraining order and why the defendant presents a credible threat to your safety. Once you have completed the petition, you will need to swear under oath to the truth and accuracy of the statements therein. Then the court clerk will take it to the judge who will review the petition. The court will either issue temporary orders or the judge could deny the petition. If the judge denies the petition, you are free to file again later for a restraining order. If the judge issues temporary orders, the police will serve the defendant with a copy of the restraining order. Make sure you keep a copy of the restraining order on you at all times. The domestic violence hearing will be scheduled within 30 days from the date that you filed the petition. However, the defendant may request a hearing within three to five days, so you will need to be prepared to go forward quickly if the defendant does make the request to have a quicker hearing date. At the final domestic violence hearing, you will need to be prepared to testify. This means that you will have to tell the judge in your own words what happened, and why you need the restraining order. Make sure you're honest and be prepared to give details of the abuse and tell the judge why you are afraid of the defendant and why it is important to issue a domestic violence restraining order. Thank you for listening and if you need further information, please feel free to contact me at my office by telephone, email, or through my website.